Now, you have been variously identified as a climate change skeptic, a climate change denier, and other things. And we'll talk about those terms and what you yourself consider yourself. But one reason I've always wanted to talk to you about this is because, first of all, I should confess, I have not really kept up with this issue. I don't really know the territory. There is what seems like something approaching a consensus that it is this, uh, you know, climate change is largely man-made and uh and has horrible consequences down the road and we should we should do a lot about it um and because you know some people i trust are paying attention and tell me the consensus is more or less right i kind of take their word for it uh and and some of them also tell me the people who believe otherwise are cranks but i happen to know that you're not actually a crank i've, I've known you long enough so to to know that you're not crazy so i've always wanted to hear what exactly your position is and what the issues are from your point of view. And I should warn people, again, this won't be a debate. This is not you against the other side. This is just an exploratory interview from my uh, point of view. So first of all, denier versus skeptic, which, if either, are you? Now, the term I prefer is, is lukewarmer because a lot of uh, proper scientists quite rightly say, look, we're all skeptics. You know, we're, we're supposed to be skeptical about science. And the word denier is just a pretty nasty one. It's, it's, it, I, I can't make out what I'm supposed to be denying. I don't deny that climate change is real. I don't deny that it's man-made, at least partly, perhaps mostly. Um, what I do deny is that there is good evidence that it's about to turn really dangerous. And uh, that, indeed, it's happening worse than expected. I mean, the ma my main beef is that the problem has been exaggerated. Uh, I think it's real, I think it's happening, I think it's man-made, and I think it's not going to be that bad. And I can go into the reasons why. And by the way, just to do a little history here, I c came at this from, uh, as you rightly say, I'm not an anti-science person. In fact, I spent virtually the whole of my career carrying a lot of water for science on many issues against creationism, against genetically modified, and before genetically modified crops, etc., etc. You know, so... Um, uh, nature nurture you know I, i've stuck up for what i think is the scientific rational empirical side of of, of every argument um and uh what and, and i did you know on climate change i would describe myself as a completely conventional uh follower of the conventional wisdom when i first started writing about it in the late 80s i just went back actually a couple of weeks ago and read some of the stuff i wrote for the economist in the late 80s and it's it could come word for word from the IPCC today, with a few wrinkles about the way that mm. people talk about things have changed. Um, uh, and what's changed my mind? Well, firstly, I wrote a book called The Rational Optimist, which was about how the world's getting better, not worse. And that forced me to confront the big pessimism of our day, which is climate change, which is the the argument that, that our grandchildren are going to have it a lot worse, even though things are getting better for most people in the world at the moment. Um, and that made me go back and examine predictions of ecological doom from pesticides to uh, population explosions to, you know, deserts advancing, acid rain, all these things. And, and came to the conclusion that nearly all of them had been wildly exaggerated in the way they were presented at the time. And they, they mostly faded away. And that made me more skeptical. And then I began to look at the science of climate change itself and became much more skeptical because it was clear that it wasn't happening as fast as the models were predicting. It was slowing down rather than speeding up. The models themselves were based on a piece of physics that wasn't showing up in the real world. Sure. That is to say, the, the greenhouse effect of carbon dioxide, sure, that's fine. But that can't get you dangerous warming. You know, that can only get you a degree for a doubling of carbon okay, dioxide. Okay, so let me, let me uh, get clear on that. You're saying, first of all, it's manifestly the case that consensus models from, say, 10, 15 years ago have turned out to overestimate the rate of, uh, at which the planet gets warmer? Yeah, basically, um, the IPCC in its report in... And, and remind us what IPC stands for. Yeah, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is the UN body that, that collates a gigantic report on climate change every six years. Mm -hmm. And its latest report in 2014 uh, admitted that uh, 111 of the 114 model runs were too hot. But, you know, we're predicting higher temperatures today than has actually happened. Okay. Um, and to put it in perspective, basically, we've been told to expect 0.2 to 0.3 degrees per decade, which works out at two to three degrees per century. You know, that's the kind of 
you know that that and a lot of people are talking about four degrees per century you know but but two to three degrees per century would give you 0.2 to 0.3 degrees per decade that was explicitly predicted in fact we've had um just over 0.1 degree if you go back 50 years uh, and much less than that if you go back 20 years so um uh, you know, we've had all, what's often described as the pause, what the IPCC itself refers to as the as the hiatus for the last seventeen or eighteen years, with virtually no net global warming at all during that period. Over, Even, the, over the last seventeen, eighteen years. Correct. I mean, how come, the, how come every headline I read seems to suggest otherwise? Well, they, they say twenty fourteen is the hottest year on record. Um, now that's. Uh, completely compatible with what I just said, because in one of the data sets, the NASA one, it is the hottest on, on record, but by two hundredths of a degree warmer than 2010 and maybe three hundredths of a degree warmer than 2005. You know, so by tiny margins, the margin of error in these calculations is ten hundredths of a degree. So it's within the margin of error. So there's no significant warming over that but period. But 